Welcome to a new daily top ask Reddit video. Today's topic. Redditors, who are not in love with their SOS, why are you still with them? Good question op. I'm in a relationship for the last 14 years and what I have to say is, love is amorphous, it changes what it is and is hard to pinpoint sometimes. Sometimes you will be mad at each other, sometimes you will share laughter and smiles and hugs and kisses, sometimes you will be underwhelmed, sometimes you will be bored sometimes you will be full of pride and appreciation, other times you will take them for granted. Sometimes the sex will be great, other times samey. But life goes on can anyone truly say they are in love constantly and without interruption always, or is it something that ebbs and flows? I think the latter. But I am always loyal and feel allegiance to my partner and family, I always have the attitude that I am committed and we are on this journey together, and I certainly don't want to be with anyone else. So that's my two cents right now. I am always loyal and feel allegiance to my partner and family, I always have the attitude that I am committed and we are on this journey together, and I certainly don't want to be with anyone else. That is love. I think people confuse dopamine highs with love, which is why they get bored with awesome people. People watch too many Hollywood movies. I swear a ton of modern dating was awful when I did it because people had too many ideas of how it should be love at first sight and how you had to kiss on the first date and have sex on the third or else it would never work out, or whatever other idiocy they came up with. Like, the only rule ultimately is if you like spending time with them, keep spending time with them. Don't break up or force anything just because of some stupid timetable you heard on a show once. I was the one super in love. I don't think he was. Once every four or five months, we'd have some sort of discussion. The last time, it was that he didn't know if what we had was love. I should have seen that as a warning. But I convinced him to stay with me after an hour discussion. I think he felt guilty. I stayed with him through suicide attempts, drug-induced psychosis, and moved countries for him. I imagine he felt an incredible amount of guilt, and stayed with me because of that. I think he cared for my well-being maybe. But he wasn't in love. And it's painfully obvious now that I'm out of the relationship. I hate this one because I can't just chalk it up to someone being a jerk. Can confirm, breakups where no one is at fault are the tilde tilde worst tilde tilde hardest. When they're an asshole, you can hate them. When you're the asshole, you probably don't care. When you both still care about each other it just will not work, that shit takes an incredibly long amount of time to recover from and makes you question everything. Edit, thank you to all of you for letting me, and each other, know we're not alone and for sharing your stories. Also, to the people who disagreed with me, I agree that it all depends on experience. I don't mean to belittle any of your pain. My brother can't stand his wife, hasn't really been in love with her since about a year before their wedding. He talks about divorce to me when we're alone but he'll never do it. He thinks he'll never meet anyone else being 32 with no social life. Plus there's a strong possibility she might kill herself if they broke up, or at least attempt it. So together they'll stay. I just hope they don't bring kids into it. 32. He has so much life ahead of him. And no kids. He needs to get out of there and his wife needs therapy. Edit, should have added they could both benefit from seeing a mental health professional. I focused on her need as more immediate but realistically he needs to explore why he chose to get married in that situation to begin with. I'm around that age and, perhaps irrationally, feeling old and past it, so these comments are helping. Edit, to put into context I'm not married forward slash settled down and I'm female. Thanks for all the encouraging comments. Might sound blunt. But should the divorce day come, and she indeed kills herself. That is not on your brother, in any way or fashion. You are absolutely correct. An ex told me she would kill herself if I left her. I said I don't want you to do that but I won't be manipulated and left. Sometimes you have to be tough and have a strong will. Edit, my first silver, thank you very much. It's great to see so many replies and so much empathy. I hope that anyone in a similar situation to what I went through can see that manipulative people are not your responsibility. Fuck. I'm 32, single, trying to have a social life. That's okay, you know what's worse than being alone being with someone that makes you feel alone. Seriously. At 32 I met one of my best friends ever and about a month before my 33rd day, I met the love of my life. 32 was a fucking decent year. 
GTF out there and put yourself on the line. We're in our thirties. What do we really have to lose? My parents did not love each other but have stayed together because of children. Oh boy. This shit is common as fuck in India dude. PFFT. Arranged marriages. Tell me about it. My parents got divorced but still live together. It's fucked up for everyone. Our neighbors are from India and in an arranged marriage and have a child, we're in California. The wife told a neighbor what's it like to actually love your husband. Such a strange culture to us westerners. Edit, changed with to have a for clarity. My boss has been vocal about wanting to leave, but he has kids and no prop, so he can't afford it. My cousin told me about three hours after he got married that he didn't want to get married but now he was terrified he would lose his house and basically all his money, alimony plus child support, if they got divorced. I told him that he should have said something three plus hours ago and he said he couldn't. I then asked him, if this was such a big concern to him, why he didn't get a prop. His exact words to me were those don't actually exist. They're just made up for movies. They've been married just over two years now and I'm pretty sure it's only going to end if she leaves him or one of them dies. Considering he's 26 and she's 23 or 24, it sounds like he's in for a long, miserable life. Your cousin is an idiot. It just sort of became a habit, and when I realized I didn't have the feelings anymore we had two young children and I didn't want to break up the family, and later when when we tried couples therapy, this didn't change anything, but our son was diagnosed with leukemia two years ago, so I felt we had to stay together until he was well. My ex didn't agree and we were divorced this summer. My son is almost through the treatment and is doing fine. I have not been this happy and relaxed in years, and so far the kids, six and nine yo, have coped well with me moving and when they are staying at my new place. You guys did the right thing. Much better for children to have separated, happy parents than married, miserable ones. Glad to hear you're doing well. Edit, for anyone who wants to ask for proof, please read the dozens of responses of anecdotal evidence. There are also a few scientific studies linked that show that while divorce can have negative consequences in the short term, it does not in the long term. To people saying that divorce dooms their children to the same fate, staying with someone you clearly don't love does the same thing. Obviously, divorce should be seen as a last resort. I do not know why some people are reading this and thinking I am advocating for divorce in every situation. Get therapy. Try to communicate better. But if nothing else works, it is a great last resort. This. 1000 times this. My parents stayed together and it's caused asterisk me and my sister a lot of harm. My sister's in therapy and I would be too except I'm an idiot. My sister is a massive piece of shit. Constantly calls her husband limp eye in front of people, in reference to his supposed limp dick. Tells him that she wishes he'd get in a car and drive off a cliff. I'm not saying she does this just when they are arguing, I mean she does this literally every single day, not even angry at him. He's been dealing with this bullshit for 20 plus years out of the 30 years they've been together. The reason he does not leave here is that she would be homeless if he did. She has a bunch of felonies for theft, identity theft, prescription forgeries, etc. She used to be a nurse, had a decent career. Now she wouldn't be able to get a job anywhere. He knows that if he were to leave her, there's a decent chance she'd die on the streets. Other than him, everyone has abandoned her at this point. Just a side note, he is an incredibly honest person. Never steals, does not do drugs, goes to work every single day and works hard. Edit, here are some text messages between them that their son, my nephew, sent me. I guess his mom sent them to him to show that their father did not deny abusing her. The husband doesn't look great here, but I can't honestly blame him at this point. I spent a couple of years living in their house a while back, and I can say that I never saw the dude get angry, be abusive, or anything else. Maybe he's had enough at this point and is fighting back. Not sure. However, in the time I spent living there I had my sister steal everything out of my wallet, sign up for credit cards in my name, watched her abuse him and the kids, emotionally, nearly every day, etc. Overall, it's just a very sad situation. Jesus, let her be homeless. Edit, thanks for the silver, did not expect such a huge response here. I am so sick of men being treated like garbage because some women think they deserve everything. I am a woman, 
BTW, and would never treat my lovely BF like this. I resoundingly second this. This is why you should never be too good of a person. You end up being walked over. This is why, whenever I do a bunch of really nice things, I balance it out by tripping a toddler. Being a good person and having character are not mutually exclusive. Why is he falling on a sword to save her? Her well-being is not his responsibility, she's an adult. They are both miserable instead of just her being miserable. Humans can be amazingly empathetic creatures, sometimes to their detriment.